head of the 2016 presidential election. Joining me now is Congressman Mike Garcia, who was in the committee's meeting with Durham today. Congressman, thanks for being here today. First thing I got to ask is, what did you learn today? What can you tell us about what you learned that helps us better understand what Durham found? Yeah, and just to reiterate conclusively that, uh, you know, the, the, the Russia collusion hoax was, in fact, a hoax. There was no substantiation for the investigation to rise to the level that it was. There was clearly uh, an FBI bent uh, to uh, go after this presidential candidate in a, in a different manner, frankly, than the other presidential candidate uh, investigations, in this case, uh, Hillary Clinton's. Uh, so, w w what Durham basically laid out for us was, uh, first of all, very thorough. What he provided us was very thorough, but what was missing to me were, were the more important pieces. Uh, frankly, not interviewing guys like FBI Director Comey, Assistant Deputy Director McCabe uh, during this process leaves a lot of empty gaps, and, and, and the, the biggest takeaway were that some of the issues that the FBI specifically and leadership in the FBI experienced are not things that sh would be remedied overnight by mm. simple protocol changes, especially when it comes to FISA warrants, et cetera. So uh, this is something we need to continue to look at and, and specifically the nexus uh, between not only this, this hurricane crossfire, but also uh, what, what's being referred to as the Clinton plan. And right. uh, there's a lot of missing information here still that we need to look at, but appreciate what Durham has done, but uh, we're certainly not finished. Were you able to press him on the missing pieces today? I mean, did, were you able to learn a little bit more about, you know, why those missing pieces matter or, or why they were avoided? Tell us more about that. Yeah, we certainly pressed him. We asked the questions. Uh, we didn't get, frankly, the answers from him. Uh, it was uh, effectively, hey, things w were uh, now uh, up to the FBI. And, and so we, we know where to go look and we know where to go ask, ask the questions. But, you know, again, one of the major takeaways I have is that this FBI, the leadership at least, the protocols that they've put in place since this, this hurricane crossfire investigation, especially when it comes to FISA, are not sufficient to prevent this from happening in the future. And there's this paradigm that we need to prevent this from happening in the future. Future, but I yeah. believe that one of the biggest ways to prevent this from happening in the future is to hold those who had flagrant violations of these protocols in the past, and that would be the deterrence for future violations. So if we don't hold those accountable from the past, uh, we should expect this to happen again, and uh, it's just a matter of which personality is uh, running the FBI at that time. So, Congressman, what can you do about that? Because I, following this story, the FBI has sort of said, yeah, we made the changes, we, we had some issues, we've made changes. I don't know if anybody's really lost their job through this. So if you're, we're sitting yeah, back not, as, that, as. Yeah, and that's, and that's part of the problem. It's not good enough. There's, that's one of the talking points is people should lose their job over this. It, it has to go beyond that. Losing your job uh, should not be the repercussion for a constitutional violation, especially when you're determining the outcome potentially of a presidential election. You should be charged with a criminal federal offense uh, in this case. And what happens is as they're applying for these FISA warrants, there's warnings and cautions that say, hey, proceed with caution. What you are doing is very serious and make sure you have approvals. But there's not anything in that process that says if you do this with malevolent intent, knowingly and winningly, either missing information or, or putting in false information, you will be charged with a federal felony. And that doesn't happen yeah. right now. And that, that is the big missing part. Congressman, it, really quickly, is there any chance that the public will get to hear from Durham? It'll move from behind closed doors to public and we can see how you're pressing him in these questions. Do you see anything like that happening? Yeah, I think he's uh, going in front of the Judicial Committee tomorrow, so we'll hear, we'll hear an unclassified version. There are classified documents surrounding these investigations that unfortunately we can't bring out. You know, one of our uh, uh, primary missions in the Intel Committee this, se this session is to declassify as much as we can, but uh, if there's national security implications, we won't be able to do that. But uh, we'll see a, a lot of these conversations in uh, open uh, uh, session tomorrow with the Judicial Committee. Look, it seems like more change has to come. We'll be watching and waiting to see if that happens. Congressman, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you. Thank you.